Let's edit an astrophoto. This is the Iris Nebula taken from uh, Bortle 8 city centre. It's 30 hours of data using a one-shot colour camera and I also use an Optolong L quad enhance filter. It's RGB data so there's no hydrogen alpha or oxygen 3 or anything like that and we're going to speedily process this start to finish. To start with I'm going to just make a clone of that so we can always go back if we mess anything up. This is a, an oversampled image so I'm going to use integer resample to begin with. Let's downsample it by two. This is the equivalent of binning by two. This will give us a better working resolution. And I'm going to run some gradient correction to help smooth out that background. There we go, that's looking better. Now I'm going to find image solver and I'm going to run this which is going to give PixInsight lots of useful information about this image which will be uh, handy later. In a moment I'm going to run Blur Exterminator. Before I do that I like to run PSF image which is going to give us a useful number that we can use when we use Blur Exterminator. So let's evaluate this picture and we want to make a mental note of the number that's between the two full width half maximums here. So I reckon that would be about 1.32. Load up Blur Exterminator put in 1.32 here. All the other defaults are pretty good and then we'll run that. Now that's completed, uh, PixInsight applied some deconvolution there and the image will be a little bit sharper as a result. Let's uh, run SPCC next. Yeah, let's do that to help with the color. This is uh, uh, broadband data so we don't need to click narrowband mode there. Uh, what we do need though is to select a region of empty background that we're going to use for the background neutralization function. So let's just do a preview of there. Looks nothing, so that's good. Region of interest from the preview. Select that and then we'll run it. And it always looks like it's ruined the image but it, you just need to reapply an un, unlinked screen transfer function to get everything back. Let's remove that preview. And I normally like to run SCNR to get rid of any excess green as well, even though we've just run some color calibration. I just find that that process works better. SCNR after SPCC. Let's rename this SCNR because that's the last thing that we did. We can always go back to this if we mess up the next stage. The next stage is stretching to nonlinear. I'll often use easy soft stretch just because it's so simple but in this image we've got a lot of contrast here in the center because of this really bright area and then the dimmer areas around it. So if we have an image like that generalized hyperbolic stretch is the way to go. I don't pretend to be an expert in this so I recommend trying to find another tutorial if you want to get into the, the deep dive of it but for now you can just see how I go about it. So I've started off by removing that stretch. We have our real-time preview here and I'm going to move this up. Till we get to result. And true to form I immediately messed that up so reset, reset. I'm going to move this up to around about here and then you see that, that contrast I was talking about there that's where local intensity is useful to bring that down a bit don't want to do too much because then we'll lose all the contrast we want to have uh, we still want to be able to make out that central star we don't want to lose that and we can do our fine adjustment here of the, of the symmetry point the SP you don't have to do everything in one go with GHS. In fact, it's a good idea not to. So let's say that's the first decent stretch. Let's apply that and then reset the settings and then go again. Right, 
I reckon that's fine for now. Let's call that a decent job. And we have our stretched image. Let's call that GHS because that's what we just ran, our last step. And make a clone of it. Now we want to make a starless view. We want to separate out these stars. And there's a few steps to do to achieve that. First of all, I'm going to load up StarNet2 and uncheck linear data because we've stretched. And we're going to apply that to this clone that I just made. Then we want to go to Script Utilities and Screen Stars, which is a, a separate download. So if you don't have this by default, just uh, you have to obtain that, but it's not too tricky. Uh, and we're doing star removal. So our star review, our star review is GHS clone. And the starless view is what we just made over here. GHS clone clone. So that's all good. We want to create a new image and we click OK. This gives us a high quality star field. The stars will be pretty tight because we ran Blur Exterminator on them earlier. But my personal preference is to boost the saturation of my star fields a little bit. So I'm going to boost everything up around that. And that will give us some nice colourful stars. And I'm going to put the stars out of the way. We'll need them later. I'm going to call this one Starless. And make a clone of it. We're making good progress. It's pretty noisy though. I think this might be a good time to just run a little bit of Noise Exterminator. Say 0.6. That's looking better. And a bit of curves transformation now to really make that nebulosity pop. Keeping a careful eye on that star, we don't want it to be completely washed out. I like it to have this nice glowing effect. We can make this area around here a bit more contrasty, a bit punchier, by running dark structure enhance. Not too much though, let's go for 0.25 looking a bit punchier and perhaps a bit of unsharp mask across the whole image. Let's zoom in. So the default that looks like it's a bit too much doesn't it? It's kind of bringing out the noise as much as sharpening. That looks okay. I always forget to drag the triangle for this one. A little bit of a gradient creeping in, so let's run. Uh, let's let's try another gradient correction. Let's see if this if this does the trick. Looks good. Now I'm tempted to run a smidge more noise exterminator, just to clean it up a little. And at this point, it would be good to spend a bit more time with the playing about with the curves and things like the color saturation. For example, boosting our blues a little in the centre, that might be quite nice. You can spend a bit of time doing this and uh, yeah, running through your curves again. And then once you think this is looking nice, then we can put the stars back in with screen stars. This time we're doing star replacement. So this starless view is starless clone, what we've just been working on, and the stars view is stars. Let's run that. Not bad, not bad at all. In fact, I'd say that's pretty much it. We can do a little bit more if you want to. Um, I like to sometimes put the images into Lightroom right at the end. I know I'm unusual in that because Lightroom isn't really for astrophotographers, but I can do a few final tweaks in there. But this is this is pretty much done. So I hope that was useful just for the basic steps for processing this particular image.
uh, thank you for watching. Oh, ha! I almost forgot. I've been times two at the beginning, didn't I? So let's take Starry and let's up sample by two to get all that resolution back. So we have a nice large image to end with. Thank you.